Hey there, I'm Lenore. I am the founder and shelter manager here at Piedmont Farm Animal Refuge. And today we are taking a little visit with the ducks and the geese. Uh, we actually have three duck areas. So three houses, one, two, three in the line. And we currently have uh, around 24 ducks and three geese who live here. Here in duck house one on the pond, you will see swimming uh, Dexter, who is the white duck, and Channing, his best friend, who is the little mallard. Dexter actually had kind of a sad story. Uh, he is a Peking duck, who those types of ducks are often used for food, but Dexter was someone's uh, pet, and that was lucky for him, but unfortunately, when they didn't want him anymore or couldn't care for him, they decided to dump him on a pond. Um, and domesticated ducks, when they're left on a pond, unfortunately can't survive. They're either eaten by predators or they're unable to find food and compete with those wild ducks. Um, in Dexter's case, a snapping turtle grabbed him by the foot and was dragging him around this pond for over an hour and he was at risk of being pulled under and being drowned um, in addition to just being injured. Um, there were some people who noticed what was happening and they got long sticks and they tried to help Dexter get freed from the turtle and eventually he did. Uh, when he was freed, he swam right over to the edge where they were, came up on land and came up to this woman and basically sat on her foot. And she said, well, I guess I'm the one taking him to the vet. And so uh, Dexter went to the vet and from there the vet contacted us um, and said, we have this, this duck, he was looking for a home. And so Dexter has been with us ever since. And lucky for him, his foot was not injured too badly. Uh, he was able to uh, heal and doesn't have any remaining problems from that. Here on the porch, we have one of our geese on the left, Ellie. Uh, we'll go see if we can find the other geese in a minute, but uh, their story is the Humane Society actually rescued them from a property that had uh, no running water, no food, and was basically just littered in trash. Um, there were a number of types of animals there that were rescued, including three geese who came to the refuge after they contacted us. Um, when they arrived in quarantine, we noticed that something strange about them that they just wouldn't say anything. They were silent. And so for the first month or so, they were just very quiet, very reserved. And our vet took a look at them and said, well, their main problem is just malnutrition. Uh, they just need to be put on a good diet and they should be fine. And uh, now that they have uh, been on that diet for a while here and have come to live at the refuge, uh, they are quite loud. You might hear them honk today on uh, our visit, but especially in the mornings. Every morning when we open up the house, they like to start the day with very loud honking. And uh, we like that because that's how we know that they are healthy and feeling good and feeling like regular geese. Oh, jumping in. <laughs> you can see how the birds use this little dock. Uh, this is a special feature of the duck and geese house. Uh, we wanted them to have easy access in and out of the pond and so they often will kind of stand right on the edge preening, uh, you know, sunbathing and then whenever they feel like they're ready, they'll hop on in. Um, so it's nice to see that they use that in the way we intended it.
the duck house, um, some of the features that we designed for these birds, um, these little doors that are just their size, um, at nighttime, they're completely closed like this. And there's a special pole that comes down to secure them. Um, in the morning, we open these up and the first thing everybody does is run out and usually jump right in to start the day with a bath. But they like these little doors that are just their height. Um, we also have on this side of the house, this clear wall and this is facing south, so especially in the winter time when the sun is lower, we get a lot of light streaming in through this clear wall, heating up the indoor space, heating up the birds, and keeping them nice and toasty. Um, also because we have the pond on the south side, the light often bounces off the water and you can actually see on the roof that there are some light reflections right now. Um, especially in the winter time, this comes in the house even more. And so uh, this is sort of a visual way that the, the feeling and the motion of water is present inside their house uh, using the sun. who we were talking about earlier, who was dumped on the pond. He's going to go in for bath time. Over here we have um, some interesting ducks. These are a type of duck called Muscovies. And uh, these guys' names are Professor Tim and Charlie. Uh, Professor Tim is PT for short. Um, these two ducks were actually dumped at a community vegetable farm. Um, the farmer reached out to us just to say someone left these ducks on the property. I don't know what to do. Um, and so we said we'd love to have them here. Now one thing you might see Professor Tim doing is putting up his crest. So uh, Muscovy ducks have uh, feathers kind of like a mohawk along the head and the neck and they will sometimes in display, if they're trying to show off, uh, puff those up and down. That's called the crest. Muscovies are interesting because they are actually native to uh, Central and South America, whereas all other domesticated ducks originate from Asia. So they have a lot of interesting features that look very different because they evolve differently from other ducks. One thing that's very obvious is uh, all of the red bulbous bumps on their head, kind of like a turkey head. These bumps are called caruncles. Um, and the males have more than the females. Um, the more bumps you have and then the redder you make them with your blood flow, that's very um, alluring to the females. So the males tend to have a lot more of those bumps on the head area, on the face area. Uh, Muscovies also do some interesting body movements and uh, vocalizations that are different than other ducks. Um, they're not doing it right now, but sometimes you'll see them with their flat tails wag them back and forth, kind of like a dog. Uh, and they'll often do this head motion that you'll see um, Professor Tim doing here. Uh, they do a lot of that, and when they talk, instead of a quacking sound, it's almost like a raspy noise that is coming out. Um, so they're very different than other ducks, but they do seem to be able to communicate with the ducks we have here and have conversations, even though they do talk in a different way. There's that tail. <laughs> going inside the house. Oh, and he's going back on his porch. <laughs> he likes to jump in that way, maybe. <laughs> now, some interesting facts about ducks. Um, here at the refuge, 
we it doesn't get very cold because we're in North Carolina, but uh, sometimes in the winter we'll get a little bit of ice on the ponds that we'll have to break up for the ducks. Now, even though the water is freezing cold, as long as we can break that ice up, the ducks and the geese are allowed to swim on the pond. Uh, they don't get any problems from frostbite or other issues from the cold. And one reason for that is they have a special mechanism in their body called a heat exchanger. And this cools their blood down before it enters their legs and feet, which are very exposed to the cold. This helps keep heat into their internal organs and keep their body from getting too cold. And it also makes sure that the skin on their legs and feet uh, doesn't get any frostbite or other issues from the cold water. Um, it's a very rare day at the refuge that uh, the ice is so thick we can't break it up and we have to uh, keep the ducks and geese in. They're not very happy when, when that happens. So luckily in North Carolina, it's very rare. Ducks and geese also have a special oil gland at the base of their tail, and they use that to spread oil all over their feathers. And you can see that Charlie here is really getting into preening, and one thing he's doing is he's just sort of straightening everything out, making sure he looks good. But they'll also go back to that gland with their beak, get oil, and then spread that around their entire body. And they do that every day to make sure that their feathers have a good consistent amount of oil. And this is very important for swimming. In fact, when um, ducks and geese are babies and they haven't developed the oil gland yet, they can actually um, have problems in the water not being able to float very well. Um, so it's very important to make sure that they're old enough before they're going in that water. Um, but it helps them with buoyancy and it also helps them just keep water away from their skin. Um, in fact, uh, when they go in the water, you often see little beads of the liquid just sitting on top of their feathers because that oil is serving as a barrier. Um, in fact, the ducks could dive all the way to the bottom of our ponds here at the refuge and they would be totally dry underneath all those feathers because all the layers and all that oil do such a good job of keeping them dry. Now inside the duck houses, we use sand as the bedding instead of straw, which is what we use mostly here at the refuge. And one reason for that is uh, sand is very good at draining and uh, it keeps all that moisture that the ducks bring in and out from building up too much and creating um, like a straw issue where there would be mold or something like that. Um, it's also very nice on the ducks' feet and it's more of a natural substrate that they would have in the wild. might be able to hear the Muscovies talking with their interesting raspy voice just then. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will be posting some videos with our turkeys and with our goats in the future so be sure to check back.